start now. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome back to our um, the, the series of our online engagement. It's time for another two hours of our relevant discussion. This afternoon, we'll talk about online summative assessments. And we invited two resource speakers to share their insights on this topic. Welcome to our sixth webinar series. I am Roel Paras, the Training and Development Officer of De La Salle University Das Marinas, and I'm with I am with Dr. Gracia La Armilla, the uh, Department Chair of the Tourism Management, and will be your host for today's online uh, online session. Before we start our program, I would like to share some rules that we need to observe during the online engagement. This webinar is recorded. To participate in the question and answer portion, you may use the Q&A chat box. When asking questions, please introduce yourself and the institution you represent. For the registration, if you have not yet registered, please register using this link. The information in the online registration form will be used to give you an account in the LSUT's learning management system. This will be the platform where you can access the webinar resources, give feedback, and get your e-certificate. You will receive an email that contains your username and password. You only need to register once for the entire webinar series. Now, to get your certificate, watch out for the access code, which will be given at the end of the webinar. It will be shown in the presentation. Log into dlsudas.edu20.org. Go to Courses, click Enroll. Input the access code. You can either go to Modules and look for the Webinar Evaluation Module, or go to the Assessment and answer the survey. After completing the survey, you will automatically receive your e-certificate. You can download your e-certificate going to your profile. Here are some tips for our attendees who are encountering audio problems. Check your audio device if it is turned on. If you are using earphones, headset, check if it is properly connected. If it is still not working, use the built-in device speaker. Check your internet connection. Restart your internet and or your device if needed. Exit the event and rejoin again. Check if the audio is working on the other apps. If you're not using MS Team applications, we suggest you download and use it to participate in the webinar. If using laptop, go to your MS Team profile, setting devices, and select the appropriate audio device speaker. To formally start today's webinar, let us pray as we continue on our journey to new learnings. Let us all remember that we are in the most holy presence of God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
St. John Baptist de la Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Once again, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar entitled Online Summative Assessments. As part of our academic collaboration with the Commission on Higher Education, this learning engagement is brought to us by De La Salle University Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research through the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee. Let us now move on to our program at this point to give his message. Let us now welcome the Dean of the College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology, and the Chair of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee of De La Salle University Das Marinas, Engineer Jose Rizaldi de Armas. Sir Saldi, good afternoon. Um, Kindly check your audio, sir. Hello. Yes, please go okay. ahead. Okay. Again, to today's the web education. As mentioned. So the first part of the webinar. Hello, Saldi. I'm sorry to interrupt your your message. I think we have some yes. difficulty in your audio. Um, if I may request you to kindly check it. And um, hello, uh, sir. Hello. Sir Saldi, can you hello. hear me? Paul? Yes, can you please try um, your audio for sir? Can you hear me, sir? Um, parang nagpapakipluctuate po yung audio, sir. It's actually not stable. So, no, no, no. Okay na po. Um, sir, are you using your um, headset or the speak built-in speaker of the of the laptop? No, the... Hello, hello. Hello, sir. <clears throat> hello. Yes, sir, please go ahead, Pop. Okay. So can you hear me? Can you hear me? Um, I think no wala, sir. I'm not sure if the other members can hear you clear. Okay. Sir Sir Paul, if I may ask, can you hear Sir Saldi, yeah, po. Ano po, uh, may putol putol po, Sir Saldi. <laughs> may mga interruptions no, sa audio. Maybe we can go back to Sir Saldi later on. Okay. Or should we? Would that be fine, Sir? Yes, Sir. Okay. Sir, Sir Paul, would that be fine, Sir? 
Yes, po, I'll, I'll All right. talk to Sir so Sandy. All right. So we'll get okay. back to Sir Sandy for his message. This is a very important part of our program. So we'll get back to Sir Sandy later on for his message. Uh, as we go on and move on to our program, at this point, let us acknowledge our participating school once again who are with us and um, continuously supporting our online engagement. So we'd like to welcome our participating schools. We have the schools from uh, we have the participants from Aber State Institute of Science and Technology, Asian International Institute for Advanced Studies, Adventist University of the Philippines, Asian Institute of Science and Technology, Arnold Jansen Catholic Mission Foundation Incorporated, Batangas State University, Bulacan State University, Bulihan Integrated National High School. Kalamba Doctors College, Capi State University, Caritas Don Bosco School, Cavite State University, City College of Tagaytay, and Coleo de Mentilupa. We would also like to welcome our friends from Coleo San Agustin, the Cup of Wisdom Academy, De La Salle College of St. Benilde, De La Salle Ipa, De La Salle Medical Health Sciences Institute, De La Salle University Das Marinas, Divine Word College of Ordaneta, DMMM, uh, CIH. Yes, Institute of Health Sciences, Don Bosco Technical College, Mandaluyo, Philamore Christian University, La Consolacion College, Bacolod, Laguna State Polytechnic College, Lyceum of the Philippines, University Cavite, and Madalag National High School, Aklay. Of course, we'd also like to acknowledge our participants from Madre Tidita, Martelis School Incorporated, Manila Adventist College, Marymount Academy of Paranaque, Marvelous Faith Academy of or Mindoro State College of Agriculture and Technology, Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, National University, National College of Science and Technology, Oriental Mindoro State College, Rizal College of Taal, San Juan de Dios Educational Foundation Incorporated, San Sebastian College, Recoletos de Cavite, Santa Isabel College, and St. Jude College. Also, we would like to welcome our friends from St. Anthony de Carmele Academy Incorporated, University of Negros Occidental Repetos Maholod, University of Perpetual Health System Dalta Molino, University of the Cordilleras, Bicol University, Isabella State University, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Open University System, and Sister of Mary of Danox Incorporated. Also, we would like to welcome our participants from Sir Gaudel Sur State University, University of the Perpetual Health Dr. Jose Tamayo Medical University, MOL Magsaysay Maritime Academy, Emilio Ronaldo College, St. Thomas Beckett Academy, and Pandan Bay Institute Incorporated. Special acknowledgement to, the, to our friends from the Department of Education, Cavite, Department of Education, and the Commission on Higher Education. So once again, I would like to welcome everyone, especially our participating school, for joining us this afternoon. And at this point, let me present to you the webinar objectives. For the first part, for the first topic, the objectives are to present strategies of doing summative assessment in general, common challenges in doing online summative assessment, and ways to address them, and to provide tools in assessing summative written works and explore platforms in conducting online summative assessments. And for the second part of our webinar, here are our objectives. To give an overview of summative assessment on licensure examination related subjects, to give an introduction about the DLSUD SEAT programs with certification licensure examinations, to give an overview on the goal of summative assessments and its relation to licensure examination and the child's career, to provide a glimpse on assessment tools and skills used in online summative assessment for licensure examination related subjects and to give an overview on the application of care-centered learning for students and faculty and typical experiences as students and as faculty. Today we have invited two resource speakers to discuss topics on online summative assessment. Our first speaker We'll talk on online summative assessment and she will focus on outputs while our second speaker will also talk on online assessment summative assessment and will focus on board courses so before we go on to our uh, talk proper may i ask if um the audio of sir sadi is already fixed so we may proceed to his message 
Sir, can you hear me now? Yes, Sir Sadi, much better. So okay. to give this message once again, let us welcome the Dean of the College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology and the Chair of the Faculty Training and Engagement Committee of the LSU Dasmariñas. Yes, welcome Engineer Jose Rizal de Arnas. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Good afternoon everyone. So again, I am pleased to welcome you all to today's presentation on online summative assessments. This is part of the webinar series prepared by the LSUD in response to the call of the Commission on Higher Education. So as mentioned earlier, uh, today's webinar will focus on online summative assessments. As uh, Sir Ruel said, the first part will emphasize on the output-based assessments, while the second part of the webinar will concentrate on the online summative assessment for licensure examination-oriented courses. So perhaps the discussion will center on strategies, how to prepare online summative assessments, the necessary tools and platforms that can assist us in the preparation and conduct of online summative assessments, as well as sharing of best practices. So we are very fortunate this afternoon as we will hear another inputs and best practices from our distinguished resource speakers as uh, introduced by Saruel. So we are certain that this presentation will help us further in the preparation of our online classes. I would also like to take this opportunity to recognize the DLSUD Faculty Development Committee's commitment in the preparation of the webinar series. So this is headed by Dr. Pat Alcartado, of course, with the guidance of the Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academic and Research and our Vice Chancellor for Academic and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. So on behalf of De La Salle University Las Marinas Faculty Development Committee, again, welcome to this afternoon session. So magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you very much, Sir Saldi. Salamat po sa inyong message. And now to introduce our first resource speaker, let us welcome the Department Chair of the Tourism Management of the LSU Das Marinas, my co-host for this afternoon. If I may um, ask, Miss Grace, Miss Grace, can you hear me? Hello, Miss Grace. Yes, sir. Well, yes, sir. Well, good afternoon, po. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Please proceed, po. Good afternoon, sir. So it is my honor and pleasure to introduce uh, our first speaker for this afternoon who will discuss about uh, online summative assessments. Sir, well? Yes, Ma'am Grace. Ms. Grace? Okay, our first, yes or well? Yes, please proceed, Paul. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. Our first speaker is a science education specialist and presently the chair of the Information Science Group of the National Institute for Science and Mathematics Education Development of the University of the Philippines, De Leman. She is also an affiliate faculty of the Faculty of Education of University of the Philippines, Open University, where she teaches undergraduate and graduate courses in mathematics and mathematics education and advises students of the PhD in education program. Our speaker earned her degrees in Bachelor of Science in Mathematics, Master of Science in Applied Mathematics, Major in Operations Research, and Doctor of Philosophy in Education major in mathematics from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. As a teacher trainer, she has been involved in professional development programs related to the use of technology in the teaching of science and mathematics. She headed the development and implementation of the Intel Teach Pedagogical Support that was set up to provide instructional support to teachers trained on ICT integration under the Intel Teach program. The learning experience gained from utilizing such teacher support me mechanism was published in a case study in 2007 in UNESCO's book on ICT in teacher education, case studies from the Asia Pacific region where she was the lead author. During this pandemic, she has served as resource person in webinars on remote teach, teaching and learning, and she's also currently leading the online right shop on developing self-learning modules of the Kasama Teachers Education of UP Nismet. Our speaker was also 
one of the module developers of the Department of Education's Learning Delivery Modality Course 2 for teachers. As a researcher, she has also involved in educational research, which includes the, the BAAM ARMM assessment of teacher proficiency in science and math in 2014 to 2016, the study of the effectiveness of a technology solution using a Raspberry Pi powered server in the classroom, in plus the testing of the versatile instrument system for science education and research, that adds early grade reading and math baseline assessments in 2015, and the Department of, of Science and Technology Science Education Education Summative edu uh, Evaluation of the Implementation of the Technology Package Project. Recently, a resource speaker wrote the topic brief on teacher professional development on ICT in education in the Philippines in digital learning resources in Philippine schools as part of the RTI educational study on the EdTech ecosystems in the Philippines that was funded by the USAID. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you our first resource speaker, Dr. Mona Lisa T. Sasi. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am Grace. Okay. Um, let me just uh, present. C can you see my screen now? Yes, Dr. Sassing. It is okay, already. Touched. Thank you. Um, good afternoon once again. Um, I, I'm I'm sure no. It's it's since it's almost a year since our first lockdown, and um, many of us have actually shifted from the face-to-face -face, uh, office report from the physical reporting to work from home setup and uh, from the face-to-face -to, -face to remote learning and uh, I'm sure you've you've uh, tried a lot of uh, tools already you've tried a lot of ways on how to deliver instruction and even how to to assess your students in this time of pandemic in this afternoon's session I'll just briefly review you on the formative and summative assessments and uh, present to you some recommended strategies uh, for doing summative assessment and uh, discuss a bit about the emerging assessments these days and uh, also present some common challenges that we encounter when we do online assessment and um, some aspects or factors or some considerations that we have to look into when we do online summative assessments and leave you with tools that will uh, help you assess the summative written works of your students and also some platforms that you can use in conducting online summative assessments. All right. Um, there are actually two major forms of some of assessments and uh, they are classified based on their purpose. One of which is to improve teaching and learning while they're happening or while they're in progress. Also to check no, on how your students are doing, to monitor their progress and to provide feedback to them to help them improve. Another one is that which uh, evaluates the outcomes at the end of an instructional unit which can be compared against certain standards and uh, you also in this uh, format uh, you have to make students demonstrate their knowledge of the content and so you get insights of their understanding which one is formative and which one is summative okay the one 
on your left is formative, and the other one is the summative form of assessment. Also, formative and summative assessments differ in terms of the nature of the assessment. Um, the formative assessments we give to our students are normally of informal type, no? They're mostly diagnostics and they can also be formal and uh, flexible. Then they are ongoing and occurs at the appropriate stages of the learning process throughout the instructional unit and produces feedback that can help improve learning and even teaching. Summative assessment, on the other hand, is one that's more formal, structured, done at the end, and produces a grade. Briefly, that's formative and summative assessment. What forms of assessment or summative assessment in particular have you already done in your class? Have you done or have you been doing in your class? Anyone? Oops, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure you've already done these things, no? Many of you have created exams and uh, they are based on the content that you have covered given either at the end of a unit or at the end of the course or midterm. And then standardized tests, you have one. Then you also give final projects, right? And even final reports. Or you ask your students to write about a particular topic. Uh, you, you ask them to write essays, for example, on how they can help conserve the uh, or, or preserve the the coral reefs, no? Or even ask them to submit term papers, term papers about, for example, about remote teaching and learning, or about teachers' pedagogical content knowledge, or even about uh, waste segregation, and even ask them to come up with presentations, presentations that they can even share to a specific group no, or a particular group for a particular purpose. These are, these are some examples of the summative assessment that you have been doing no, in, in your classrooms even before the pandemic and mostly actually before the pandemic. And in doing summative assessment, it is recommended that you make use of rubrics and what's the purpose of a rubric? It's uh, to guide your students on the kind of output that you would want them to produce. Uh, the rubric would serve as their uh, guide. No, uh, They will look at the criteria set there and the indicators of something that's outstanding, a kind of output that is outstanding. So they will look at that set of indicators that fall under outstanding and try to observe or follow what's in there so that they get uh, an outstanding grade for your an outstanding rating for their output. And uh, your summative assessment should be clear and should have questions that are that can be in essay type, but they have to be effective ones that really measure what students learn. No? And uh, it should also assess the comprehensiveness of what you have given your students. It should assess the, it should provide your students with opportunity to consider the totality of the course's content, uh, making broad connections and demonstrating synthesized skills. And the, it should be able to to let them explore deeper concepts that drive or found a subject's ideas and content. And the parameters should be clear. The parameters for your summative assessment should be clear to your students. And like if you give 
an exam, you have to tell them for how long will that exam be? Is it for three hours? Is it for two hours? Is it just, is it just for one hour? And you even have to, to define well no, the knowledge that you would want them uh, to demonstrate in that particular exam. And in assessing outputs of your students, consider like uh, a written output, consider blind grading so that you don't get influenced as to whose work you're rating, no, you're assessing. So you can consider blind grading to be more objective in, in rating their outputs. And in, in this time of um, where in this time of pandemic and even before the pandemic when uh, technology has proliferated you know, almost every aspect of our lives, there are emerging forms of assessments. One of them is the on-demand assessment, which uh, students in which students take a pretest, and then after some time, if the student performed well in the pretest and feels that he's, he or she is prepared enough to take the course, then takes on the course and then takes the post test after. And then another one is the automated assessment generation. Um, this is uh, available in Moodle. If you make if you're making use of Moodle as a platform for your learning management system, it automates a generation of items and uh, there are other platforms now that can even um, change you know, the set of items for your students can automate the, the set of assessments, the uh, assessment items that you would want to to administer to your students. And there's automated marking of assignments. Which, for example, in Moodle also can be done, especially for short answers uh, and multiple choice questions. So you can uh, set uh, the test or the exam such that it automatically rates no or mark the it automatically marks the answers of your students so it's not just available in in Moodle even when you use Google form you can set up an exam making use of Google form that will automatically mark the answers of your students in video based assessment, this is actually where your students. Take a video of themselves performing a particular task. <coughs> like in UPOU, we do this in the physical education classes because UPOU is fully online, fully distance mode. So as a way of assessing students. Learning, for example, or, or uh, performance in, in a physical education class is where the faculty would ask them to submit no, a, for example, a video of the student doing the dance or if it's a yoga class, then doing the basic yoga uh, exercise. No? And just recently when my daughter was um, enrolled in also in, in the physical education uh, subject in UP Diliman, they were required to submit a video of them performing the dance steps, no, a particular set of dance steps being demonstrated by the teacher. And that served as the basis, no, the video that they submitted served as basis for their um, midterm and also another set of choreographed or dance steps. Uh, they submitted online um, uh, that served as their final exam. So that's a video based assessment and then the teacher would assess the video if the, the, the student has really performed no uh, the performed well the steps. And then in adaptive assessment. What's done here is. The next step of the kind of assessment 
uh, items that will be given to the student is based on the performance of the student in the previous, uh, in, in the lessons and even in the previous exams. No? So there's an artificial intelligence involved in here. So when the student would take the next exam, it will actually be uh, set, no? the, the AI would determine uh, the performance of the students in the previous exams and even in the in the assignments that uh, were submitted and then give the student a set of items that is applicable to his or her context and performance level and in peer-to-peer -peer assessment if you have taken Coursera courses they would ask you to assess your the, the work of your peers no? so you get involved in assessing the work of your peers and uh, you also give feedback you also give uh, rating no, a rating to uh, the work on the work of your peers and in por portfolios uh, it's actually a compilation you ask your students to submit a compilation of their work throughout the instructional period and uh, for example you can ask them to submit um, a set of uh, poems that they have composed no throughout your English class on for example on on, on literature uh, poems that relate to the literature that they have read and when we do online distance learning the implementation of these summative assessments for them to be effective is really challenging no and I'm sure Many of you have already experienced this when you were doing your um, distance learn online distance learning with your students in the past semester. And we encounter challenges and the uh, most common of which are the following cheating. This is actually not only in online assessment. This is also a problem or a big challenge in even in face to face no and uh, there's also that plagiarism with a lot of resources available on the web your students can easily find no answers to your questions or even sample written works i have one stood i had a student before uh, when i asked them to submit a write up an essay about a particular topic and uh, when I read her work I found it strange that it doesn't actually relate to to what I asked them to apply no, to, to the principles that I would want them to to consider when they write their essays and so I, I checked for it just uh, copy pasted some parts of the work that she submitted and uh, checked it in Google, put it in quotes, and there I found you know, the, the source. <laughs> so it's really very tempting in, when you go online and, and with the internet uh, offering you a lot of resources, it's really very tempting for our students to, to just copy paste and uh, claim written works as their own. No? That's why it's really very important that we have to address this particular issue, this particular challenge, especially when we do online assessment, actually not just in online assessment, no? in everything that our students do, we should um, discourage, we should not tolerate plagiarism. And there's this problem also of student collusion. Um, I, I'm sure you're already familiar with this one because these actually are not just applicable to online assessment. So what do we do with these challenges? No? Here's some considerations that you have to look into when you do online summative assessments. Of course, you have to know what your goals are when you do assessment. You have to identify what specific knowledge or skills you are going to evaluate. What would you want your students to learn? What would you want them to be able to demonstrate? 
you have to be clear with your goal. And you have to ask yourself this. What alternatives do you have? You have to consider that there are other options that will provide your students the opportunity to demonstrate what they have learned. It's not just the exam. It's not just a presentation. There are other ways by which they can present an evidence no, of their learning and uh, evidence of what they have learned from your class. So you have to consider alternatives. Also, when you do online assessments, your assessment should ask students to explain their thinking. You don't just ask them the what questions, the objective type of questions where you let them select an answer from a set of alternatives. And those are objective types. No, they can easily guess or they can easily copy from their classmates. So one way of doing that is to give multiple choice items that ask your students to explain how they arrive at such an answer. If you have encountered those two tiered multiple choice items where students select which is the correct answer, but the second level would ask them to explain why they chose that answer. So in this particular example, the question is, where is the gene for eye color located? Then the student will have to select no, which one is correct, which, which one he or she thinks is correct. Then there's a follow up question. Which of the following reason reasons is your uh, which of the following is the reason for your answer? So it could be one which is genes are not uh, are only located in tissues where they are expressed. Or it could be um, two, which states the X and Y chromosomes, which are found in sperm cell, carry all the genes. Or three, all genes are present in all cells. Or four, different parts of a body have their own specific genes. Or five, the iris is part of the eye responsible for eye color. So which one? Aside from this, you can also ask them to really write down, no, express in their own words why they think, for example, B is their answer, why they think B is their answer. So you can ask them to explain. In this particular example, they still have to select no, which explains their answer. But another form is you ask them to choose and then you ask them to write down in their own words, type in their own words why that is their answer. OK, so this assess this form of assessment. Asks your students to explain their thinking. Another one is that you should require students to engage in deeper levels of thinking. Here's an example. In this particular item, there's a situation, no? So Cora is a mother of a single mother of three, an infant and two toddlers. And then she works part time as a real estate agent and is enrolled in two graduate courses. Based on the theory of margin of McClusky's of McClusky. What can be said about Cora in terms of his uh, theory of margin? So in this particular item, you give your students the chance to compare options, no? which do they think is right as they apply what they learned about the theory of margin. It's not just a simple selection of, of uh, the correct, which they think is the correct answer, but it requires them to really think no? based on what they know about the theory of margin, with, based on how they understand the theory of margin, which of these statements best describe no, about Cora's uh, theory of margin stat, uh, state? No? So there are selection, uh, four statements here that describe Cora's margin, and then they can answer any of the four no, choices. It can be that it's a statement one, three, and four. 
So makikit, you'll see here, uh, if the student really understood no, what the theory of margin is about, how your margin, how your current margin is being assessed, or how you can assess or you can increase your, your margin. This is uh, a course on um, um, adult uh, education. No? So in this particular example, you're using the multiple choice type of assessment item, but you ask students to compare options as they or, or they up or apply a specific concept. No, so you engage them in deeper levels of thinking. Another thing that you consider when you do online assessment is the grading structure. The grading structure should support the building of knowledge over time. That's why portfolio assessment is really useful for uh, online summative assessment. And uh, for example, you can in portfolio assessment, you can ask your students to submit in science, for example, the set of graphs they have created for the analysis of a particular uh, of a series of data that you have provided them or a compilation of posters that they have created or the lab reports that they have uh, done. Or in math, you can ask them to submit their solutions to a set of problems you have asked them to solve or submit the graphs or charts that they have created for a particular set of data. And then for language or English, for example, you can ask them to come up with a reading log or even a book summary or a book report. Uh, this is very common in English. And also some essays, no? A compilation of essays or poems. And one thing that you also need to take into consideration when you do online summative assessment is the randomiz randomization of the items in a multiple choice, no? And even in short answer exams, because it will increase the academic integrity of your integrity of your exams. Um, this is a common feature of online exam. Even in uh, Moodle, you can do this. Uh, your students will not necessarily have the same set of items, even if they uh, do the online exam uh, all at the same time. They don't necessarily get the this that the, the same number one no, in, in the test. Uh, the other one may get an item related to, for example, about theory of margin, the other one will get uh, an item about inclusive uh, uh, adult education. So you can randomize no, the administration of multiple choice and short answer exams. And this is very common in uh, learning management systems quiz features. And also you consider small edits to a question that change the correct answer between students while testing the same concepts. You, this is uh, uh, this implies that you have to make several versions of your assessment. So um, in in teams, if you have been a proctor or if you have observed the conduct of the third uh, of the trends in international mathematics and science study, it has 12, if I'm not, if my memory serves me right, it has 12 sets of booklets, no? 12 sets of items. So student one will not have the same set of items that student two has, no? So those 12 booklets will be distributed to the 12 students in the first or, or first and second row, for example, then an, another 12 book, the, an, the other 12 booklets will be distributed also to the next set of students. So the chance that the, that the student next to student A, for example, copies is very low because they, they don't have the same set of items. And in fact, when I was monitoring Teams 2019, 
I observed one student asking no, uh, a student at his back for the answer. I was just observing them. I did not at all intervene, no. And I and they realized that they have different sets of items, so that stopped them from asking each other. So they just focused on answering the items in the test because their set of the set of items that they have is totally different from the ones at their back or from the ones just next to him or her. So you make versions, several versions of your assessment of your exams. And another one is to consider different options and their implications regarding when the test is available to the students. In my case, uh, when I give online exams, I limit the time uh, for my online exams. So I just give, they can open notes, they can refer to online um, uh, resources if they want to, they can surf the, wor the web, but they have to be able to submit their answers after an hour and a half. So if you limit the time, that would discourage them to check on each other's answers or even to check the web for answers because that would eat up a lot of their time, no? So limiting the time for online exams is one way by which you can prevent them from cheating, from copying answers or just Googling answers on the web. And you have to let your students also try out the assessment approach. In, in, my, in one of my classes in OUPOU, I usually give them a practice exam. No? So I, if I give online exams, I let them have a sort of a trial exam, uh, sort of a reviewer also for them. So that way I would know, know where the problem would be if, I, if in case this is the first time that I administer the exam. So I let them try it out. And also for them to, if it's the first time that they take an online exam, they, they have the feel already before they really take the actual final exam, for example. And for written works, you can make use of uh, plagiarism and cheating, cheating detection software. There are a lot no, on the web. Um, some are free, some are, well, you have to, to pay uh, on a subscription basis. And then one thing that you can also do is to really educate both your teachers and your students about, uh, for example, citing their sources properly, about synthesizing uh, what they have read and not just copy pasting it and claiming it as their own. And also the implications of cheating and plagiarism, the penalties that your school has no, against uh, for those who commit plagiarism and for those who cheat. And that way you develop a culture of integrity. And also rethink assessment by designing authentic assessment tasks. You focus more on student engagement and use um, various types of assessment tasks and challenges and also try to consider assessing soft skills. When you focus your assessment on authentic assessment, you actually allow learners to express themselves in ways that are realistic to them, in ways that they can easily relate to. And uh, it encourages learners, it encourages learners to apply the knowledge and skills that they have learned and you will also be able to see no you'll get insights as to how they understood the reading material for example or the content that you have provided to them and it makes them develop deeper and more integrative personal learning and knowing but remember when you focus on authentic assessment you make sure that your assessment tasks resemble those of real world tasks and activities and they should be structured as they can be structured as either written or oral and may be done individually or by pair or in groups. And also, you, sometimes when you give authentic assessments, uh, you can give 
ill-structured problems with no right answers. So it depends on how each group or each student will will address you know, the problem or, or the particular uh, problem. And you ask students to communicate what they have learned either orally to a particular group for a particular purpose. For example, if your lesson is about preservation of coral reefs, then would you want your students to, to share what they have learned to a community, no? That's uh, to a fishing community, for example, so that they have a purpose of sharing also what they have learned, no? Educating these people in that community that it is important to preserve the coral reefs and these are the things that they uh, can do, no? To preserve the coral reefs. And uh, they can even have uh, it presented to a professional group of audience. Here are some examples of authentic assessment tasks that I'm sure you have actually required your students to come up with you know, even before the pandemic. This is just uh, some samples. You can ask them to write memos or uh, letters or emails by asking them to pretend, for example, that they are applying for the, a particular job. If it's an English class, then you can ask them to assume roles of applicants you know, and apply uh, their learnings on how they write an application letter, for example, that they need to attach to a res to the resume. And you can ask them to create brochure or presentations or, or brochures that they can distribute to their community, for example, on waste segregation, proper waste segregation. And another one is case study or simulation games where you put your learners in a scenario and let them take roles to play to solve a particular problem or engage in decision making. Or you can have this, uh, what they call as fishbowl assignment, where there's a group who will choose, who's gonna sit, you know, the hot seat, and then who, who will answer the questions. And then there's a discussion that will going, that, that will proceed after that. And uh, you can ask them to make policy briefs or proposals or reports or concept notes, or even ask them to come up with a video or a website or a blog or a vlog or a comic strips no that they can uh, where they can show um, evidence of their learning and here are some approaches that you may uh, apply no employ when you do online summative assessment of course, the very common one is the online exam forms, no? uh, online exam platforms uh, like the Google, you can do that. Uh, in Edmodo, they have a built-in quiz function that you can use to administer an online uh, quiz or an exam. And then you can also use product portfolio. They can submit a digital portfolio of their work, or you can use remote proctoring. We do this in UPOU. Uh, when I had a student uh, one time who had a disability, so he cannot go to the learning center to take the final exam. What we did was for someone to proctor the student online. So we asked the student to set up a webcam uh, and then uh, the proctor also has uh, a webcam. And then uh, the proctor sees the student no, answering the question. And then even the, the submission, for example, if it's uh, something that they have to write, hand, to do handwritten uh, work, then uh, to write in their own handwriting, uh, the student has to show them that uh, he's the one scanning the paper and then submitting it online. Step by, the step-by-step -step process is being uh, watched you know, by an online proctor. And in fact, in UPOU, um, at the start of the semester, uh, we're asked to indicate if we have to do online proctoring or no, or, or we just want an online exam, but it's um, uh, there's no need for an online proctor. We have to indicate that no, for so, so that the university can prepare for the online proctoring and also students can prepare, no? Uh, the problem there is really the the issue of uh, large class, no? The the large. Uh, if you have a lot of students, how will be, uh, online proctoring be done, no? 
And you have in-class presentations. Uh, in, in the case of online uh, learning, then you can let them present during uh, in a synchronous session using uh, via Zoom no, or via Google Meet. Or you can ask them to submit a paper, a concept note, for example, or do other written works. And to help you assess no, the summative written works of your students, here are some tools that you can explore. We have Grammarly. Uh, this is that tool where you can check for the grammar of your students or even plagiarism checks. No, it has the Grammarly has a plagiarism check, but uh, I think it's uh, for a fee. The Kitex can can check for plagiarism for free. No, uh, let me show you. I'll just uh, unshare this one and then refer you to the site. Oops. Oops, I'm sorry. What can you see on my screen? Is it the Firefox? Okay, th this no. one is the the online exam no, for my uh, class in Math 2 in UPOU. C can you see the Ketex now? I hope you can see this one flashed. On yes, ma'am, it's the text. All right. All right. So this is the online tool that checks for plagiarism. So you can just uh, sign up for a free account. And this one is, uh, is I, I copied this one. No, I copied this one exactly from an abstract that is found online. And I pasted it here just to check no, if, if it uh, has, uh, if it can check plagiarism. And the higher the number here indicates that uh, the, the more likely it is being plagiarized, no? So 100% it's a plagiarized uh, content. Since I just copied this one from an online abstract I found, no? So if you click this, uh, the, the, the underlined sentences, it will tell you where, for example, this one. Uh, if I if I click the second uh, the, the third statement, this one here, it says 100% match. And if I click that, this one changes here, meaning this is the the page where this particular sentence is found. No, uh, this particular sentence has, sentence has a match. So you can see here that this is 100% plagiarized. No, <laughs> because I just copied this one from an online abstract. So this one checks for the plagiarism and it has it is for free uh this one is grammarly I, i'm sure many of you already uh are many of you are using grammarly this one again is the abstract that i copied and uh, i pasted it here for grammar check and uh it will tell you which ones should be corrected or which ones are need to be rephrased, etc. No, there are suggestions for correctness um, and there are other um, texts, uh, features here you know, that you can check. All right, so these are just a few of the tools that you can use. Go back to my presentation. You can explore the other tools here, like, uh, well, turn it, I, I'm sorry, turn it in is not for free, uh, but uh, Pro Writing Aid has a free feature and e even Dupli Checker. Of course, uh, for a complete uh, set of features, then you have to, to pay for uh, a fee, no, a minimal fee actually. Then here are some platforms that you can use for online summative assessment. You have Gradescope, you can explore that. I, I'm sure you're very familiar with this very famous uh, Kahoot, no? So you can explore that. But actually, Google has one that you can also set up for your online exam. So you can explore Google. And if you're using Moodle as your platform for, for uh, your learning management system, there's also a quiz feature or 
an exam feature there that you can use to deliver an online summative assessment. And uh, you also have Edmodo. If you're familiar with Edmodo, it also have a quiz feature. Okay, uh, Edmodo and Moodle are free. Um, also Google Form is free, so you can make use of these platforms. Okay, when you do online summative assessment, remember that you have to follow the same principles in online mode, but needs to consider the various aspects that I have uh, shared earlier for your exam to be something that, that cannot easily be copied for an exam where students cannot easily cheat, no? So um, you have to engage them in deeper learning, uh, in deeper thinking, so you don't just give a multiple choice item that is of objective type that will just ask them about the knowledge level, but a multiple choice of item that, a multiple choice item that would require them to explain their thinking. And uh, it is not, it when you do online summative assessment, remember that it is not the end of a student's learning, but it's actually an opportunity you know, for you to be able to get feedback on students' growth in understanding. And you focus on learning, on your learning objectives. You emphasize the skills that you want your students to develop throughout the school year or throughout the semester. And explore alternative ways by which your students demonstrate their learning. There are various assessment tasks that you can give to them. You can give them, ask them to come up with projects or essays or concept notes or even case studies that apply what they have learned from your course or from your subject. All right, so that's it and thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Dr. Sassing. That was the first part of our webinar. Thank you for giving us a very um, interesting topic, a, uh, a very good presentation. And at this point, let us now move on to our the second speaker. So to introduce our second speaker, may I request Ms. Grace once again? Ms. Grace. Yes, Sir Roel. So thank you so much, Dr. Sassing. Sir Roel, can you hear me? Yes, Ms. Grace. Okay. So um, for our second speaker, he is a faculty of the engineering department, uh, specifically the civil and sanitary engineering program at uh, the De La Salle University Des Marinas from 2016 to present. He attended the Far Eastern University Shed High Ed Bayanihan Project teacher training on wired flexible learning last August 17 to 21, 2020. He's also a resource speaker on uh, various um, uh, webinars. And uh, recently, he was a resource speaker on DILG Water and Sanitation Hub online virtual training for local government unit for the year 2020. Our speaker also handled special topics for sanitary engineering from 2016 to present. He also attended various online training and webinar on remote learning by DLSED and other organizations. Again, ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you our speaker, our second speaker, engineer, Mark Brian Pabon of the College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology of DLSED. Hello, my test. <coughs> Clear po ba yung audio? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, good afternoon, everyone, fellow educators and everyone who are attending this uh, webinar event. So let's proceed. So again, I'm from the LSUD from College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology Engineering Department. So uh, I will focus on online assessments for licensure examination related uh, for engineering subjects. So I'll review the objectives. Uh, by this, I hope uh, it will provide an overview of summative assessment uh, that we are using on licensure examination related subjects. 
uh, provide introduction about uh, the uh, DLSU DSAIAT programs and uh, with certification and licensure examination. Provide an overview on the goal of summative uh, assessment and its relation to licensure examination and the child's future career. Uh, maybe we could provide, I could provide the glimpse on assessment tools and skills we need used in online assessment for licensure examination subjects and an over overview of the application of the LSUD care centered learning, uh, our online learning uh, uh, policy for students as faculty and typical experience as student and as faculty. So summary, uh, summative assessment, refresher, and uh, licensure examination under our college. Our typical goal on giving the assessment, assessment tools, the care-centered learning, the care for the student and the care for the faculty, and our experience on this online uh, platform or system. So again, when we say summative, we all know that these are used to evaluate the, our students' learning their skills acquisition based on what we have provided and academic achievement at the conclusion at, at of a defined uh, instructional period. So for typically our special topics is typically one school year, uh, special topics one, special topics two on some programs and on sanitary engineering program, we have one semester. So it's only special topic uh, one. And what makes an assessment summative is not the design of the test itself, the assessment or self-evaluation, but the way it is used uh, to determine whether and to what degree the students have learned uh, the material they have been taught. So right now we're using online platform. Some of us may be using home-based learning or the printout, and some are using uh, fully online uh, delivery. So here are some of the set programs with licensure and certification examination. We have architecture, civil engineering, computer engineering, electronics engineering. Uh, ECE can take electronics technician. And uh, EE -E or electrical engineers ca engineering can take master electrician. Uh, civil engineering and sanitary engineering, including architecture and electrical engineering can take master plumber examination license. For mechanical engineering, we have also the license for that and for the sanitary engineering license. For some programs as well, there are some certifications and licensure exams provided by the PRC or the related program organization. So that is, uh, I'm showing this because uh, that is the uh, uh, somehow the end goal of preparing the students uh, during providing a, a summative assessment. So let's focus on our goal. So we have a goal for our students, which are future alumni and professionals. And also we have some goals for our university or college, uh, particularly the faculty, the program in the college. Uh, giving uh, this summative assessment, uh, we have the goal to our current, for our current student, uh, students uh, to have, for them to develop integrity when taking the exam and good character. So uh, it is very important for them that even uh, it is online, they should develop that uh, character of integrity and become confident in preparation and taking the licensure examination. It is a very different setup. It has been a challenge for us educators and students, but we need to uh, do our best in order to somehow make sure they develop their uh, skills on that. And of course, uh, they should be able to pass or ace the licensure examination. And uh, I think this also included become a competent professional and be happy and satisfied with their chosen career. For the university, of course, uh, all, all of us have the goal to, uh, to fulfill and sustain the delivery of our school's goal, mission and vision on providing quality education and the continuous development of the program, the college, the faculty, and further improve the promotion and sustainability of the program of the course. Of course, 
uh, added bonus is if we have good uh, licensure examination record, uh, of course, the marketing of the program will be somehow a little bit easy and most high school will be encouraged to take the program from our university. So let's review uh, some typical learning materials before we proceed with the assessment tools. No? Uh, for the home base, we are typically using uh, printed materials and soft copy, uh, PDF and printouts and recorded media or soft copy by a flash disk. And of course, uh, if the student ha needs to ask or have feedback or consultation, uh, somehow some schools or us are providing our communication channel for them to ask. For our on fully online learning materials delivery, we do, of course, our synchronous discussion. Uh, this discussion includes our visuals for showing our materials and live feedback or live Q&A during our discussion. And we also have the non-synchronous where the soft copy of materials are given through our LMS and we have a non-synchronous feedback via email or our official chat uh, application or website. Of course, we have we do have to render our online consultation hours for our student. So objectives of the assessment, what needs to be developed on the student? Of course, uh, the out, we are guided by the outcomes and objectives based on the syllabus and the CHED, CMO and our university. It is very important. M most of the students in the upper class is still uh, having issues on reading comprehension, especially on reading the uh, problem solving. So they, they need to uh, be reviewed on that. Uh, familiarization of terms and information related to the major subjects that is included on the licensure examination. Of course, we can be guided by the uh, PRC uh, syllabus. Uh, their calculation skills, which uh, I believe and uh, we also, we, I, be, I believe we all be, uh, should know that they should develop their calculation skills starting from their freshman. Their critical thinking skills, one of their very important factors. And this, uh, uh, another important factor as well is uh, their time and pressure management, how they deal with time and pressure during examination, which is normally being experienced on a face-to-face -face examination. Uh, classes, uh, I mean examination, conduction of the on uh, face to face examination. So the feeling of the time pressure, time and pressure, the time pressure. So somehow I believe on online class uh, it has been reduced because they are in the comfort of their home, but uh, they need to be prepared on the time and pressure that we will, they will experience when they're taking exam uh, that will be conducted by the PRC. We normally base our assessments from the uploaded or delivered learning materials. So we typically use this assessment for licensure examination. Uh, normally it is multiple choices because PRC and other certification organization are providing uh, multiple choice examination on hard copy. Problem solving, definition and objective, and of course calculation. So these are some typical tools and software use. These are just overview. Um, I believe uh, uh, there one hour is not enough for uh, for us to di to discuss and train each software. So I'm just gonna provide uh, the typical use and what the LSUD use for this LMS uh, portion on assessment. So for the LSUD, we use the new LMS and has been rebranded to Schoolbook as uh, the name of the website. And we are subscribed to Office uh, Microsoft Office 365. So new LMS Schoolbook, the same with other LMS brands, has of course assessment feature. And right now, of uh, Microsoft Office Forms already have a quiz mode. I've been using Office uh, Microsoft Forms uh, since I was college. Uh, I'm very happy that they include the quiz uh, feature of the forms. So can I ask everyone to type in their answers? Uh, what are other websites and apps you use in giving assessments aside from new LMS or Office 365? If you're school or if you're from the LSUD, of course, we are using new LMS or school book, Office 365 tools as well. How about the others? Or if you have other uh, websites and apps you're using, I just want to check so that uh, everyone will be aware of other brands and names. 
Can everyone type in their answer? So what are the websites and apps you are using in giving assessments aside from new LMS and Office 365? So I think right now I cannot see the chat box for Tamakova. Google Meet with external camera from uh, chat box. Quipper, we have Quipper. So I believe uh, it depends on what your school has uh, contracted to, no? Pero I just wanna ask para po aware din po lahat on the other brands. We have uh, Henio, okay? So yun po, para po malaman natin yung ibang mga brand din, no? I believe hindi naman po tayo lahat pare-pareho, no? Ng gamit, no? So forms, so it's either Google Forms and uh, Microsoft Forms. So marami naman po dyan, mga free quizzes. No? Okay po yun, okay rin po yun. So I tried also Moodle and uh, Google Class, no? Google Forms, yan po. So yun po, thank you for answering and providing your feedback. Uh, yun nga po, uh, we have, uh, we, these websites and apps help us a lot in handling our uh, LMS, or they are the LMS. So here's the sample uh, question for the new LMS. Uh, new LMS school book, uh, of course, I'm showing the multiple choice with one answer. Uh, it has uh, several uh, features where you can store a, que a question on the question bank, and you can also randomize uh, the uh, question, the, the, the sequence of questions. For Office 365, here's the example of the Office 365 uh, online form where you could uh, provide, you could create a new quiz. Again, I'm just showing this because it will take another training or hours for us to train specific type of website. Uh, yeah, then we have the uh, Google form. Please take note that this website, we all know that these are web-based and internet connection is required. The advantage of this is these are self-checking and there are automation features. So comparing if we are using Scantron on face-to-face -face or ZipGrade, uh, for this, since this is an online examination, uh, it can automatically be checked. We just need to be prepared and trained uh, to program our examination. Medyo kailangan po natin, medyo talagang magpakateki. Di naman po kailangan super programming type, but uh, we, need to ma we need to be trained in order to maximize all the features. And here, here's the example of the Google Form. And yes, as mentioned, uh, a quiz can be done on Google Form. Uh, next question. Websites and application you are aware or you're using, to provide additional integrity and security during online examination. So, ang clue po dyan yung those websites or apps that locks the student's screen in order for them to avoid opening other uh, window that can they can open the review material. So, for DLSUD, uh, I believe we are adapting or using Safe Exam Browser. I'm enrolled on a, an online class. They're using Moodle and in partner with that, they are using Lockdown Browser by Respondos. So could anyone or everyone type in uh, what they, they're uh, using a uh, software or website that adds integrity and security during online examination? So aside po sa na mention ko, no? we have the Safe Exam Browser, we have the Lockdown Browser. Para po aware din po ang iba, no? on other brands that we're using and they may they may try no to uh, use all uh, as online users uses Moodle as our lms upload exam in terms of proctoring with google meet so they can share the screen okay that's good also uh, nga po. Um, it may require uh, data because uh, live stream po yung webcam okay so, po. thank you for the feedback. No, I will proceed. 
So, yeah, typical tools we have uh, exam view, the safe exam browser, and synchronous examination with web camera. Yun po siguro yun, no? yung may naka on na camera while they're taking exam. As my colleague, colleague said no, during po nung nag-discuss, kasi nagkaroon na po kami ng training about safe exam browser, si Engineer Joshua Hernandez. Shout out po. So, sabi po niya, hindi naman natin talaga tinatanggal yung kaya matanggal yung, mat matatanggal yung cheating, pero at least uh, yung pag-ahagets ko po, no? parang on our end, makontrol po natin na mabawasan yung cheating. No? So, we can virtually remove the cheating kapag sa online, but yung mga kaya natin makontrol on our end, on our existing system and subscription, we should do that para mas makontrol po at mabawasan yung cheating. So, these tools may require a type of device, tools, and equipment and specification. Please take note po, if you want to use this, you need to check on the requirements. No? Kasi po may mga, there are some software, I mean, um, devices, yung specification po of the laptop, our software, and our speed of the internet might not allow the software to work. And may, it, this may also require training in order to properly work and properly utilize and maximize all its features. Uh, again, po, uh, it may require a good internet connection. Maybe unlimited is better because some software are one gigabyte above. Uh, good MS, uh, good upload and download speed. So if you want to use that, po, kindly we need to check on the website or the provider. So let's start with exam view. It is an uh, definite, it, it's basically a randomizer or test generator generator where we input our questions and it will randomize the question. It is not, it can be used on hard copy examination, but we can also use this uh, on our online examination. So here's the example of the screenshot of the exam view. You could check the pricing and uh, other details on the website. Again, I, I wish to discuss this, but we cannot uh, discuss all of its software and how to use it. It may require other uh, training uh, that is focused on that specific software. So per pricing, it depends on the organization and the quantity probably. So uh, our administrator or your school administrator may want to check. It depends on the brand they prefer. This one of the brand. Okay. For the Safe Exam Browser, it's a web browser uh, that's typically just uh, allows uh, the, the, the end user or the student to open the browser for the exam questions only. So it will not allow the student to uh, see or open other tabs or browser to open a reviewer. So it's, and that's an example of uh, the user interface of the Zeg exam browser. And we have the lockdown uh, uh, Respondus lockdown browser. I already also tried using this as a student since again I'm uh, taking an online class and they're using uh, model and lockdown browser so it will not allow of course you the, the user to open other browser so that's the concept and we could also do the synchronous examination which some of my colleagues already is already doing while taking the examination so synchronous exam with live uh, video feed of the camera so you need if you're using ms teams you need to activate a uh, grid view or large grid view so that your screen will show it's uh, camera of the student. So typical consideration of this is there are some privacy concerns. Of course, um, it depends on the policy of the school. Uh, the, some connectivity problems, some may uh, give our experience connectivity and device concerns as well. Some may not have a working web camera and mobile data subscription since our students, some of the students are using uh, prepaid or not and not unlimited data and other factors that can affect that uh, synchronous type examination. And typically one camera is used, so uh, all angle cannot be monitored. For example, we know that the web camera is only facing on the face of the student, but what, ab what about the, what's, what is on his wall, what is on his front? So that's somehow uncontrollable. So, it's the, it, it somehow it can reduce the the cheating, but the camera doesn't show what's or what is everything inside on the uh, child's uh, location during examination. Some some issues and disadvantage that we need to consider: uh, uncontrolled environment during assessment period. 
again they uh, they are on they are taking exam at home so we cannot control that like exam integrity copyright and file security uh, we know that uh, the students who especially the skilled one no, they they do screenshot they can do screen recording uh, OBS can do screen recording without the user, the professor's knowing and screenshot. And if they have an external device or camera phone, they could, uh, for example, I'm going to take an exam. If I change the angle of the camera here, the webcam cannot see that the student is taking photos of the examination. So I want to ask this, what are your experience or what uh, activities done by the students that affects the integrity of the exam. So I think you could type in your uh, experience, but I will read it later on so that we could proceed. But these are normal things that we experience from the past months. Uh, what are they doing that that uh, affects the integrity of the exam? In short, somehow it's cheating. No? You could type in for your feedback because of course, with the goal, with our goal to ensure that they learn in their prepare for the examination, we are also open to the fact that some of them, our students are able to do that, the, the cheating part. Okay. So here are some uncontrolled environment during assessment. Uh, classroom exam setup is different from home setup, of course, because we are proctoring our students. Uh, there's to the, the, the feeling of the student where they, where, when they take the exam, uh, is very very different, and again they have that they may have a tendency to uh, to something that is not legal, of course, because some of them may not might not be prepared. So our goal, our duty is uh, still uh, try to develop to, to develop them that they uh, once they sit on that PRC examination room, they are prepared. Uh, we will do that on our end as much as possible. The students device. The tools or equipments and connectivity is also an issue. They can dis declare or experience disconnection. How the student will behave and will deal with different type of examination procedure, because again, it's very very different setup. Um, they are sitting on their in front of their laptop or device while taking the examination, so it's a very very different setup uh, compared to when they are with the in in a classroom setup. And again, as mentioned, dealing with time and pressure which they will need to develop in order for them to prepare for actual licensure examination. If they're not ready for this, uh, they might uh, experience culture shock during actual licensure examination. And we need to improve their culture and character as future professional. Uh, we need to ensure that they do not depend too much and pass because of cheating because it will affect their later, uh, later uh, career. So those are some of the consideration. And I'm also asking this, uh, what are apps and websites that allow students to share, file, and interact during examination? So somehow if we're uh, doing the examination, what we can see is their face, but maybe some of their, their, their hands are doing Facebook Messenger, uh, to call this uh, file sharing application. That is, of course, you cannot monitor that, so here are some uh, things that may that they may do. They can screenshot and screen record the question. I believe this, this can be resolved if some question are audio recording. So they need to listen to your question, to your voice. So they cannot screenshot that. File saving, they can save the exam for future use or other non-legal use. Unauthorized file sharing and upload on uh, websites. Printing of modules in line with taking the examination so they can have a printout on their hand. And uh, this, no, yung multi-browser, multi-screen, and multi-tabs, where they open two tabs or two screens uh, in, or in their computer so they can review while uh, find the answer on the question, which can be, again, controlled if you use a safe exam browser or a browser uh, lock uh, software. And of course, we know that some students have multiple devices. Some have two. Uh, phones, as I the computer, they can also access their uh, the learning uh, review materials on the phone. And of course, uh, I, I want to highlight this note. We have the find feature or control F and some software 
uh, can already uh, get the text from image. So we can reduce this by converting our soft copy module to JPEG. But again, some software like uh, I think uh, Microsoft Notes can already uh, convert an image text into, te into text. What's the importance of that? Because if the software can convert a JPEG or an image, the text inside the JPEG into an, a text uh, uh, character, it can easily search. For example, uh, the student is looking for this keyword and your module is a uh, picture or JPEG. If he, use, he or she use that uh, software, uh, can, he can easily find the, uh, the keyword or in somehow it will lead to the answer to the question. So control F or find feature works on most PDF. And my, again, Microsoft Notes and other website or software or apps is already capable of finding text within an image. Um, I think is, this, or, this was already mentioned on the previous uh, uh, webinar. We could randomize the question order by using our LMS. We can replace the question if some of the questions are reused from the previous semesters. Uh, we can change the values if some questions are reused or change how it is being solved. And we can provide sets. Again, software and LMS can assist us with uh, providing different sets of examination. And we could also establish an, exam, an examination bank where the software and LMS can also assist us on that concern. So for the care centered model, I'm just going to read uh, what is uh, provided on their website. So the DLSUD advocates uh, technology driven and care centered teaching learning experience aimed at challenging students to understand the world and authentically respond to its needs. It is achieved by creating a flexible, reflective, and collaborative space, whether online or on site, and will help unleash a student's animal or innate talents, skills, compassion for others, and develop the attributes that the university envisions to its graduates to exhibit. So, of course, uh, all schools um, made some adjustments. So, for the LSUD, uh, I'm very happy and proud that uh, we, uh, the school, our school established this care-centered learning. We have a care for students and the faculty. Of course, uh, our school did this by providing continuous information, education and communication and about the policy and guidelines. So uh, it also provides active and continuous development of policies, our IRR, our, its implementation, and the uh, major consideration, of course, from the feedback of the students, parents and faculty. So from time to time, uh, there are IRR updates or implementing rules and regulation updates to further suit what uh, the student needs. So of course, considered on this are the factors of student connectivity, the device, the home environment, and of course, very, very important, the wellness of the students. And as well as the care for the faculty, they provided us with training like this one. No? So continuous training, continuous monitoring, uh, and improvement of the delivery. Uh, I believe that they're providing us with uh, uh, what we need. It's, for example, we need this kind of training, the CILP, our CILPs uh, have their channel or program for training. So final words uh, includes uh, our summative assessment is a major part in assessing students' preparedness and learning, and most importantly, the uh, preparation for licensure examination. Uh, it may not be it may not be the same as face face to face set of examination and we can be lenient enough but we need also also to make sure that the students will be ready no for licensure examination in their chosen career and always remind the students that yun nga po uh, marami po talaga sa ating mga estudyante ang medyo may comment or reaction na na pressure nga po pero we need to let them understand that this is also preparation for the future. It's a very, very different setup, but we need to be there for them and let them understand that this is for them. So we provide compassion, consideration on their status, and with that, we could provide care for the students. Of course, sa atin po, pinaka-importante, we should provide care, love, and take, we need to take care of ourselves. Because if we didn't do that, as educator, of course, wala po tayong matuturo or wala po tayo para sa harap natin mga sudyante. So, yun lang po. Always take care po. Hopefully, this will better days are coming. And uh, before I end, I'll show po some of the 
websites po no sa actual. Okay, so sa I'll share. Here's the example po of our uh, LMS, the uh, school book po no. So this is the new LMS. Pakita ko na lang po para po hindi po masa, mahaba oras. And then the Google form po. Dito po, you could, uh, if you could see po, no, pwede po siyang make quiz feature. And then we also have the Microsoft form. Gamit na gamit ko po ang Microsoft form. Sobrang handy po and useful. So pwede po dyan mag uh, entitled quiz. And we have the exam view website. Again po, it depends on the subscription of your school. But uh, I believe uh, our schools are willing to invest in order for us to uh, to help us monitor this. And this is the, the website of the lockdown browser. And I'll show one of my module po, no? Ang ginawa ko po para hindi po makontrol F is ginipeg ko po yung aking uh, module. So naglagay rin po ako ng counting watermark kasi po, Pagka ginahit po nila yung software yan, tapos merong parang watermark on this area, magkakaroon po ng uh, malilito po yung software. So for example, pag, pag, pag wala po yung watermark na yan, or any feature within the JPEG na uh, makakapagrito ng software, masasearch po nila yung mga keywords doon sa mga, ano, mga materials natin. So ang point ko lang po, uh, the PDF can be uh, searchable po Lari na po pag naka uh, text type po siya. Pero yun nga po, hanggat maaari po, alam ko additional work po ito and additional skills but uh, yun po, I'm just telling po sana we on our end, although alam ko pagod, makakapagod po pero we'll do our best po para ma-reduce po yung cheating. So yun po, hopefully po we all uh, become prepared and uh, do our best para po sa ating estudyante kasi po at the end of the day, para po ito sa ating mga estudyante at makapasa po sila ng board exam at maging uh, lisensyado pong mga professional. So, thank you po for your attention po. And uh, we'll proceed po. Uh, yun po. Thank you po. Thank you for listening po. Thank you, Engineer Mark. Maraming salamat po. Thank you for giving us a very informative discussion on the topic. I'm sure our participants have learned a lot from the presentation of Dr. Sassing and of course, from your presentation, Engineer Mark. At this point, we shall now proceed to our question and answer portion and we would like to welcome back Miss Grace. And of yes, course, sir, we'd like to welcome, yes, we would also like to welcome back Dr. Sassing to join us for the Q&A. Miss Grace, please proceed. Okay, so thank you so much, Dr. Sassing and Engineer Pabon. Now, a resource speaker will answer some questions that were sent to us during the presentation. So, um, here's the first question. Aside from validity and trustworthiness, what are the most pressing concerns on an online summative assessment? So, let me repeat the question. Aside from validity and trustworthiness, what are the most pressing concerns on an online summative assessment? Okay, um, can I answer that yes, first? Ma All right. Uh, well, as mentioned in my presentation, no, the the common challenges faced by teachers doing online summative assessment is uh, cheating mm -hmm. and uh, plagiarism if you're asking them to do written works. Okay. Engineer Pabon? Uh, yun po. Uh, I believe then po the yung kay mam po. And I would just want to add uh, isa pong issue and we need to consider again po is uh, the mental health of our students. Of course, pasama rin yung atin as faculty. Kasi nga po, normally tayo lang po yung nakakaranas ng ating uh, we have our battles, I believe. Yeah. And uh, we need to consider that so, kasi nga po, uh, kaya, kaya ka po sinabi, kasi nga po, there are some cases na sasabihin po ng student na uh, may gantong cases na nakasubmit. Medyo mahirap 
sabihin agad na nag-alibay siya. So, maganda po siguro from the start, makilala natin yung mga estudyante natin at maparamdam natin na uh, tulong-tulong po tayo dito sa online na ito. At hindi po yung like typical na, although sa face-to-face -face po kasi we need to have the image na somehow may takot sila para maging disciplinado sila. Pero during this setup po, we as faculty evaluate them. It's for them. And you need, I, I will help you and you need to help me to properly ensure a good evaluation kung naturo ko ba ng maayos sa iyo yung kailangan kong matuturan. So, yun po. I think to answer the question, it's the wellness po of okay. our students. And we need to also ensure our wellness as faculty. Alam ko po lahat po tayo pagod to prepare, to check and have our own lives as well. So, yun po. I believe the wellness is uh, another, uh, just to add po, no? Uh, Diyan po yung cheating, but yes, sir. So cheating po, we need to consider the wellness. Okay. okay, so for our next question, um, can you share to what extent uh, you have considered to your students in compliance to online assessments, considering the concerns on access and connectivity? So again po, for the second question, um, can you share to what extent you have considered to your students in compliance to online assessments considering the concerns on access and connectivity? Okay. Uh, would you like to go ahead, Mr. Fabon, or would, would you like me to answer first? Okay, ma'am. Okay. Um, well, uh, I, I have experienced already online assessment prior to pandemic. No? So I can compare that. Uh, before, I am very strict at uh, deadlines, but I don't penalize them. I I give incentives instead to those who submit on time or before the deadline. But in this time of pandemic, uh, and even UP has been encouraging teachers to be more considerate. So I always, especially uh, during the months of October and um, when was that? Uh, when there were two typhoons that hit the Bicol region and we have students coming uh, uh, fr from those areas. So um, there was one student who was very, very late no, in the submission. So to answer the question, I have been very flexible in terms of deadline to the extent that I allowed the students to submit even after the last day of submission of grades. So I delayed my submission of grades just so I can let them submit and catch up in consideration of what they have experienced due to the typhoon. And in some cases, uh, they've been reporting um, not really due to the pandemic, but physical health problems, no? not, not just because of the pandemic, but they have been experiencing unstable BP, for example, or they've been sick for some time. So I don't uh, question them about that. So I, I take that as, as the truth. No, so uh, I don't doubt them because it's not if they lie, then it's not actually me who has a problem. So it's them. So I, I still give consideration in the sense I give them consideration in the sense that I I accept their work even after the the submission of grades. So uh, but I don't uh, give them the maximum uh, score that they can get from that work or from that assignment to give also um, value to those who, who submitted on time. No, So uh, but uh, I make that clear to them. Yes, you may submit, but uh, bear in mind that points will be deducted from your score. That's it. Paul. Thank you for the answer. Uh, how about Engineer Pabon? Meron pa po so, kayo sa akin po, um, same din po. Uh, to give consideration po dun sa, we have some students of course na uh, mag nag effort talaga. Uh, not of course, not because of the GPA lang, pero talagang masipag. So, para po di mabaliwala yung kanilang effort. So, yung mga maaga po, there are may plus. And yung mga on time naman, so okay po, tanggap. Pero yun nga po, meron din po talaga sa atin, na mga natin na hindi makasabit for their reason. 
So, di na po natin naalamin. Pero, at least po, mahalaga po, ma-inform po ang student sa policy na meron po talaga yung uh, final deadline. Na may, talaga yun yung pinaka-end deadline. Kasi po, meron din po na experience na as abroad, tapos nag-work daw as part-time worker. So, yun nga, iba nga po, nagsisend pa ng picture ng kanilang trabaho. So, pero, just, just, that is for information, but I, reminding them na yun nga po na there's a, there's a deadline and kung meron kailangan pang ayuda or uh, tanong siguro although additional man hours yun uh, yung mga ilang nila lang naman yung mga late no and we'll let's try to help I'm, I'm trying to help them to comply pero yun nga po pagka policy ng school ito na talaga extend na ng ilang months wala po tayo magagawa talaga kasi po di natin malaman kung sino talaga dyan yung uh, nakaka-experience yung aktual kasi meron po talaga iba na ride sa, sa trend pero ayaw naman nating sabihin na hindi valid yun. So, it, it's, a, it's a very complex uh, uh, character depende sa mga ba. So yun po, tama po ang ginagawa rin po, ginagawa ko rin po provide an uh, incentive and accept po till the last deadline po. Minsan nga po talagang binapaspasan ko yung pag-check two days, three days before the deadline pero talagang pag on the deadline, sinasabi ko, may di talaga ano, kasi may checking time yan. Uh, may iba ako inasikasong classes. So, tama po. Yun po. Just sobrang laking tulong na po yun sa kanila na ina-extend po natin and we accept late. Uh, if I may add, no, uh, in UP, um, the, the system has actually issued a memo also that we cannot give a failing grade to to students no who who failed to 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 submit all the requirements so what uh, we give instead is an incomplete so there's that consideration for those who don't really have access or whose access to the internet is not good so we give them a, a, an an incomplete and then they can just complete the requirements the following sem that's also one one uh, uh, one strategy that UP is doing now. Okay, so malaming salamat po, uh, Dr. Sassing and, and uh, Engineer Fabon. And this is our last question. Uh, do you consider summative assessment as one of the most challenging aspects of the academic experience to navigate in an online context? Again, do you consider summative assessment as one of the most challenging aspects of the academic experience to navigate in an online context? Okay, uh, I, I, I'll go ahead, Engineer Fabon. Is that okay? okay. Yes, no um, Even before the, the pandemic, when I first uh, taught uh, in an online environment it's really very challenging to do summative assessment that's why um, since UPOU allows for face-to-face -face exam uh, before the pandemic I I give quizzes but I really give my midterms and my and my um, final exams in face-to-face -face. so I we have this setup where uh, students go to the learning center and take the, the final exam and the midterm exam. Because I am really not, uh, I'm really worried if they copy, if I, I, I'm not used to it. But as I have been teaching, as I teach and then I, I, for, for some semesters already, I learned to, to adjust and just trust my student that uh, okay, then they will just have to, I mean, it's not actually me who's, who's, the, who's gonna lose, no, it's them. And plus, I, to, to address that challenge of cheating is to make my assessment items something where they really have to think. So it's open notes. Okay, you can open your notes, you can search the web for answers, but I will know if you learned or if you applied what you have learned uh, with the questions that I have so and I don't normally uh, use you objective type of questions and uh, most of my final 
uh, you, as my assessment uh, method now is more on them submitting projects and uh, papers uh, where they apply you know, their, their learnings. So they apply all the theories or all the, the concepts that they have learned. So that I can I, I can see you know, that if they really understood what they have been learning from my class. So that's what I, I am doing now instead of giving them uh, multiple choice types of questions for summative assessment. So I, I let them do projects and uh, paper uh, written works. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Ma'am and sir, we still have two more questions. Okay lang po. Uh, sure po. Thank you po. Opo. So the fourth question um, was posted by Ms. Ayurin. So in terms of research paper or paper or major paper submission, how do you make sure the credibility of the students? And how can you make sure that the requirement was submitted by your student and not by someone else? So this is in terms of research paper or major paper po. So um, okay. Ms. Irene is asking po uh, on the credibility of the students kung sila po talaga ang nag-submit or uh, someone else po ang gumawa noon. Thank you. Okay, uh, in, in my case, uh, sorry, ako na naman, baka gusto ni Engineer Fabon. Okay. Okay. Uh, in, in my case, no, what I do is I really make sure that the paper that they will write has something, uh, has, uh, is related or something that will sum up what they have been reading from the modules that I give them. And what have they have been doing from the, uh, in the learning activities that I give them. Otherwise, I will see, no, if that's from someone, then that someone will have to do all the learning activities set for that module or set for the course. Kasi, kumbaga, hindi niya ma-apply, hindi ko mahahanap yon kung somebody else uh, made that for him or her. Kasi meron doong mga, kumbaga, nagbi-build up kung, uh, yung paper, ang pinaka-final product. But part of that is from this learning activity, which the students should be doing. If not, I'll know na she did not do it because there's nothing related to that particular learning activity in her paper. So, pinagtatahi-tahi ko yung mga learning activities and come up with a paper at the end that is summative no, of all the learning activities, of all the learnings that they, they had in the modules. So, Yun po yung one way ko na pag-assess. Like in my term paper, hindi lang yun yung uh, just give them the topic or ask them to, to do a term paper. May mga readings sila na siyang titingnan ko, no? yung concepts, theories, yun ang tinitingnan ko sa paper nila. So, they really have to do the learning activities. I, I hope I answered Ma'am Irene's question. Okay, thank you po. Dr. Sassing, and this is our last question. Uh, do you see that we continue to move towards online learning for the following years to um, come? Engineer Fabon, would you like to answer the question, Bob? Ah, uh, kung online pa rin. Yes. Yes, so, sir. So, uh, I make I'll make this clip. I believe, uh, although na na force tayo na ibigay lahat para matrain tayo sa online, I believe di po lahat prepared. Pero right now, kita nyo naman medyo malapit-lapit na po. Ang maganda po, uh, after this pandemic, everyone is equipped to do online class and can do blended learning. Yun po yung nakikita ko advantage. And I believe po na possible po na as we move forward to the new normal, mas marami na po yung opportunity na makapag-provide tayo ng online learning. So, sa student naman po, this is quite challenging, lalo na sa mga nag-K-12 kasi po yung batch nila, they they experience the K-12 transition, they experience the pandemic. So very, I believe, I can call it challenging. It's not easy, but challenging. And pag malagpasan po ito ng mga batang to ngayon, talagang sobrang medyo uh, challenging po. Na mal maganda po sa kanila pag nalagpasan po talaga nila itong uh, challenge na to. So I believe if we move forward to a more, uh, mas uh, maraming online activities and uh, provision of online education because of this. Okay. So it looks like we, we've covered all of our questions. So Dr. Sassing and Engineer Pabon, is there anything else you wanted to cover before you wrap up? Um, 
well, uh, for, for those who are new to online uh, distance learning, I, I, I am sure you have uh, concerns, no? Like, how do you really assess uh, if your student learn from 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 what you have given them? And also, there are concerns about access of students. Um, remember, um, you give uh, you give an activity that best uh, match uh, matches the context of of your learners. So, uh, plan out something that they can do at home. You can even let them do the the product that you want them to come up with with their parents, no? certifying th that their parents were really involved there and letting them document uh, that they have really been doing that, that particular uh, product or project uh, with their parents. And this is the time that you involve uh, parents no? in, in, in the learning of their students. And uh, I'm sure those who, who assess the learning based on for example, task talaga, the performance of the student, the skills. Um, there's still a lot to, to do when it comes to online assessment of, of skills, no? But uh, we're moving there. And uh, if you noticed, I mentioned about video-based assessment. And it's been used in other countries where they video themselves doing that particular task and somebody will have to certify them doing that task and also somebody will have to, to assess you know, the video if they have really done it uh, based on, on how it should be done. So there are efforts you not know, towards that kind of, of assessment. Efforts are being done towards that kind of assessment. But uh, ako, I'm, I am still not so into fully online. It's still best to really see your students assess it. But uh, given the situation that we have, uh, really see uh, uh, it would really be best to really see your students do it, no, in actual. Um, but given the situation that we have, this is the best uh, modality that we can use right now. And uh, there are a lot of resources being offered online for free. You can make use of them. Just be open. Uh, to new learnings, no? And don't close your mind na ito lang talaga ang dapat kong gawin. Be open to new learnings for after all, we are teachers and as teachers, we are always learners. Thank you po. Thank you po, Dr. Sasi, Engineer Fabon. Uh, yun po. Tama po si Ma'am. Uh, and we all agree na talagang mas uh, maganda ang face-to-face -face assessment or examination. So right now po, uh, hindi naman po ito parang uh, pinipit natin to do this because of the situation. Let's treat this as uh, training na rin natin and learning para magamit din natin sa future. And let's, uh, yun nga po, tama po si ma'am, be open for learning and you should never stop learning and doing effort para po sa ating mga sudyante. So wala pong susuko kahit mahirap, <laughs> kaya po natin to. Opo. So maraming salamat po, um, Dr. Sasin and Engineer Fabon for answering those questions and for the great presentation. It was a pleasure to have both of you with us this afternoon. So Sir Roel, can we proceed to the awarding of certificate? Yes, uh, Ms. Grace. Our... Yes. Okay. So on behalf of the organizing team of um, this webinar, let me present the certificate of appreciation. So, Dalasal University Desmarinas would like to give this certificate of appreciation to our two great speakers this afternoon, Dr. Manalisa Sassing and Engineer Mark Brian Fabon for being the resource speakers in the webinar on online summative assessments held this 24th day of February 2021. Signed, by Dr. Marco Zayas, our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, and Brother Gus Elbuker, uh, FSC President and Chancellor of DLSU. Maraming maraming salamat po, uh, Engineer Fabon and Dr. Sassi. So, back to you, Sir Well. Thank you very much, Ms. Grace. Salamat po. And to our speakers, Dr. Sassi and Engineer Mark, 
Thank you very yes, much. So. Indeed, we had a very good discussion this afternoon. Marami pong salamat. And once again, we would like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. All our participating schools for joining us. Um, thank you. And on behalf of De La Salle University, Das Marinas, Office of the Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, and Faculty Training Engagement Committee, would like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. We'd also like to thank our technical support team, the LSUD Center for Innovative Learning Programs, headed by Sir Paul Notorio, and the members of the Faculty Training Engagement Committee, headed by Engineer Rizaldi de Armas, the Dean of the College of Engineering, Architecture and Technology, and Dr. Paterno Alcartado, Dean College of Education, through the guidance of our Vice Chancellor for Academics and Research, Dr. Marco Saez. Maraming salamat. Before we finally come to the end of our program, here are some important reminders. So once again, mark your calendar as we have more uh, webinars on uh, March 10, 2021. That is our next seminar on pedagogical issues in online learning. So please mark your calendar and we will all see you on March 10. And now for the certificate, so log into the lsudace.edu.org, go to courses, click enroll, input the access code, which I-M-P-Y-A-U-A-K. So that's our access code for today's webinar. So if you have encountered any problems about registration and your e-certificate, please email webinars at dlsud.edu.ph. And that ends our online engagement for this afternoon. Again, thank you very much. Let us all live Jesus in our hearts forever. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sassin. Thank you, Engineer Pabon.